absolutely. It's a great, exciting night. I'm so glad you're all here tonight. Gl glad it was a cash bar, too. Um, <laughs> for cash bars in the IMA. Um, I'm Charles Venable, the Melvin and Brent Simon Director and CEO of the IMA. Extraordinarily happy to be here as the director on this exciting evening. We are here to announce um, some wonderful news, um, and that is that we have a new partnership between the IMA and the Ephraimson Family Fund, a fund of the community, uh, the community, I'm sorry, of CICF. <laughs> See, this is what wine does <laughs> early on in the evening. Um, and the Ephraimson Family Fund is giving $1 million to the IMA to support innovative programming over the next four years. Um, so I would like to officially think on behalf of the board and the staff and myself here at the IMA, we would certainly like to, of course, thank the Ephraimson family, um, Brian Payne from CICF, um, particularly Joanna Nixon, who is in the audience tonight. Thank you so very much. Uh, all of this thought started as an idea that she and I hatched, what, a year, year and a half ago or something like that. So thank you for your, um, so for being with us on this journey to make this happen tonight. I'd also like to th uh, thank my colleague, uh, Dr. Preston Bautista, who is our Deputy Director for Public Programming and Audience Engagement, who's with us this evening. His division has been working on um, all of these um, wonderful programs um, that you're gonna hear about tonight. And then finally, I would like to uh, recognize Scott Stulen, who is a new curator here at the museum, who will come up to the stage in just a few minutes. He's our first ever curate curator of audiences experience Experience and um, performance, uh, which is a very innovative title for an innovative guy and I think an innovative um, institution. He has his MFA from the University of Minnesota um, and his BFA from the University of Wisconsin. Um, he's a trained and practicing artist, which I think is very cool to have a curator who's also a working artist. Uh, he came to us from the Walker Arts Center up in Minneapolis where he oversaw an extraordinary group of fabulous projects, many of which um, um, are world famous at this point. However, I am not going to talk about what the Great Walker was able to do under the guidance of, of Scott. We're going to talk about what the Great IMA is doing under the guidance of Scott Stuland. So, Scott, come talk about ArtX. Thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you, Preston. Thank you, Joanna, for all of this. This is really exciting for me to be up here at the IMA and to be able to unveil our 2015 programming season and also uh, show for the very first time ArtX. So this is our new series. This is our new logo. This is very fresh as of this morning. So <laughs> you are definitely the first people seeing it. <laughs> um, I also want to thank, before I kind of jump into the presentation here, to uh, thank Connie and Stephanie, part of our PR and marketing team here, for putting all this together and working with me the last couple of weeks for this unveiling. I also want to thank my team. So my, my team, so Tariq I know is here, Lindsay and Jason, Jen May Hill is here, um, and Roseanne is not here tonight, and Taylor, our intern. So all of my team, would you just stand up real quick? Just They've been working really hard to put all this together, and I hope I haven't freaked them out too much um, about the volume of programming that we're going to do in the next year, but they're all really excited, and we're really excited to share this with you. And lastly, I would like to thank my wife, who's put up with all of this, um, <laughs> and our, <laughs> our four-year-old son, who's here. So he's the youngest one in the audience. He has connections. That's why uh, the four-year-old got in. So <laughs> he is. He is tweeting. I, actually, he does have a Twitter account, by the way. But... Um, <laughs> That's more about me. Uh, so anyway, we're going to jump into this. And I think a good starting point for all of this is to talk a little bit about my overall kind of philosophy of programming that really is, I think, aligns so well with what the Ephraimson Family Fund wanted to do, too, and kind of what ArtX is, and both how the IMA, how we're moving forward with all of this. So I've promised, and I think there's probably a pool out there of my team if I can actually keep this to a half hour. So I'm going to really try to do that. Um, but I'm going to start with a tangent already. But first of all, we also, because this is a media preview, we want to encourage you that you can share any of this from here on out. So 
You can tweet it, take photos of it, video of it. We're videotaping this. It's all going to go up online tomorrow, and you'll be leaving here today with a little press kit as well to be able to share it. So the intent of today is to unveil this, but also hopefully that you'll share it with your friends uh, in the community, your colleagues, and I know there's a lot of other museums represented here tonight as well, and I really thank you for being here, and I hope um, I've been really inspired by you, and I hope some of this is ways that we can partner as well. And here's our hashtag, and here's the IMA's account, and also my account um, if you want to say things about me. All right, so let's jump into it. I am going to start with the story. So I really, I shared this actually at the Indie Hub event last week, the Indie Redefined event, and I think it's really kind of important kind of sitting groundwork where I'm even coming from with a little bit of my work. So, hi, Erwin. Um, <laughs> um, so, when I was a little bit older than Erwin, uh, I distinctly remember when I wanted to be an artist. And it was actually at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts coming around a corner and seeing this Rembrandt painting. And I, I saw it, and I, and I was probably about nine years old on a school field trip, and I knew that moment, like, I wanted to do that. Not necessarily be Rembrandt, but to make art. And I also remember what happened 10 seconds later, when I got a little too close to the painting, crossed the invisible line, and had, got very uh, aggressively scolded by the guard. And to me, the, those experiences really stuck in my mind, and it wasn't so much that I, you know, I'd gotten too close to the painting, but it's the fact that that experience that surrounds the art is something that we remember too. And when I think back at that now, I think about not only do I want to create things that inspire people and really hopefully create kind of amazing works of art, but also I want to change the way museums work and how people interact with that and think about all those experiences that surround art. And I think for a lot of people, they think of their art experience sometimes as something like this. <laughs> and our hope <laughs> is to make things more like this. So, some of the kind of, I think, the key principles of that is openness. And often when we think of openness, we think about access. And access, I think, often leads to money. But when I think about open, it's not that. I think the biggest barrier for people is actually perceptions. Their perceptions of the museum that it's not for them. It's to try to break that down so that it's not the ivory tower, it's not this hierarchy. It is for everybody. And there's different ways that you interact with the museum. And this is partly, and not to like go back to the walker, but the program that I developed at the Walker Open Field, what we did is we took an open field and we turned it into a place where the community, artists, and the institution, like this, combined to create programming. And this is kind of the basis of the ArtX program, too, is how do we create this connection between all of them and connect people? Second is relevance. I was almost going to get through this without mentioning the cat thing. Um, but it's, I try not to run away from it too much. But one of the things I'm known for is doing this cat video festival, which a lot of you know. But this really, what's important about this, that it's not about cat videos, is what it was about is using that as a vehicle to get 10,000 people, most of which never stepped foot on the campus of the Walker Arts Center, to that place, and create something that was relevant to their life. And what was interesting about this is we were able to track the data from it. Those people that came for that festival were more likely later to buy memberships, come to the shop, buy tickets to other events, and the reason why is that we had created something relevant and connected to their lives and actually started paying attention to the institution. We got on their radar. We're trying to do some of those things here, too. So little things we started already. So the Autumn Equinox event, this is a, a piece by Stuart Hyatt where we crowdsource 75 guitar players from the community to create a piece. How do we take people in the community to be part of that performance? And making things fun. And too often, I think the whole kind of idea of fun is like this. That fun doesn't have to be frivolous, and smart doesn't have to be boring. It's dispelling all those myths. This is from the opening that we did of O'Keefe just this last Saturday, where we had face painting in the galleries. And it was this kind of wonderful interactive element for the show. So how do we bring back those things, like that Rembrandt, bring back that sense of wonder more often in the museum? And I think really what this ArtX program is about, it's about doing that. It's called creating an interaction. It's about using the collection here to connect with people, using the whole campus, and really coming back to, again, to that thing, that, that connection. And I know this is something that Charles has said frequently, too, is it's about flipping it around. So it's about saying, instead of being objects first, people second, how do we put people first and use the objects to connect people with one another? So what I'm going to talk about tonight in these programs is I'm doing it in five different categories, hopefully making it a little bit easier to digest. Um, we're going to do it by audience. So the first one is going to be arts education, really focusing on adult art education. 
We're doing a program launching here in February called Art CrossFit. It's basically an art history class. But what we'll be doing with this is thinking about things that you normally don't think of together. So the first one will be action painting with activism. And it's going to mix both lecture format and hands-on activities. In a few weeks, we're going to do the first Silent Night, which will be an annual event. And what Silent Night's going to do is take the Saturday after Thanksgiving, you know, the Saturday when you're kind of sick of shopping and maybe sick of your family, and looking for something else to do. So we're going to be open later that night and invite you to the museum to do silent activities by yourself. So we're going to have massage in one of the galleries. We're doing one-on-one -on -one DJ headphone concerts, silent film. We're doing silent tours. You can come and figure out what that is. But doing all these activities that are really kind of the opposite of the bustle of the holidays. We are doing a grown-up summer camp next September. So think about like an artist fantasy camp. So people go off their baseball fantasy camps. We're doing it for artists. You'll show up here on a Saturday morning, and you'll be working with artists to learn their skill, making art yourself, and then camping out overnight here at the IMA. The other little twist is we're going to have your family come and pick you up so you can show them off all the activities that you did on Sunday. <laughs> So a lot of you probably know we're doing a car show here, doing Dream Cars, opening uh, next May. And for the June Family Day, we're bringing in artist Jason Trzinski to do a, a workshop, a car break-in workshop for kids. And, but we're going to do a twist this time. We're going to do it for adults as well. So he will teach you how to break into cars, hot wear cars, and get out of a trunk. <laughs> we are also taking a program. You know the Choose Your Own Adventure books that you may, it's kind of a generational thing, but you may remember. We're doing a version of that where it'll actually be from the collection here. Well, you'll actually like, go and find a work of art and then be led to another work of art by these little print-on-demand books. It'll be a Choose Your Own Adventure book based on the collection here. And we're not going to you know, get rid of the regular types of programming that you would expect either. So we're still going to do lectures. We're still going to do tours and things like you would regularly expect. But how do we tweak some of those things? So Trisha Pike, the new contemporary curator, and I have been working on several things. So this piece, uh, Erwin Worm's going to be unveiling and open, uh, doing an opening here in January. So January 15th, he will be here doing a lecture in the Toby, a Q&A with Tricia. But then we're also going to be doing a performance immediately after it out in the Ephraimson entrance. So thinking about ways that we create more interaction happening even in those events. Likewise, Michelle Grabner is going to be doing an exhibition here uh, next year. And for that exhibition, we're doing two different uh, kind of more performative events. She has a space in Chicago called the Suburban. It's a 10 by 10 like brick building that she's done uh, exhibitions in for over a decade. We're going to recreate that out in the park and then do shows for local artists for a month. We also are going to do something that a lot of you that aren't artists aren't really familiar with and maybe have never seen. It's the art critique that happens in a studio. Those of us that have gone through art school, you know what that critique is and you know sometimes how uncomfortable that can be. We're going to make it more uncomfortable. So we're going to select some MFA and BFA students from the region to get critiqued on this stage with Michelle Grabner, who curated the last Whitney Biennial. But we're going to do it for the public. So you can see the critique process and see how that happens. We're going to do a public critique. So the next series is our kind of family and young learner programs. And we have several of these programs that have gone on. And I want to thank. City Moms for all the support that they've given to a lot of our existing programs, like We Wednesdays, um, like summer camps, and like our fantastic days. So they've been a really big supporter of ours. And we're going to continue these, these programs. And they've been at near sellouts. Um, and they're going to continue on and look for ways that we can even expand them. So one expansion of that with summer camps is that this summer we're going to do an art and nature park camp out in 100 acres. We expect this to sell out very quickly. Um, but it's another addition to our summer camp lineup. We're also adding something the way I haven't had here in the past, and that's a family day. So we're going to be doing a monthly family day. It'll be the first Saturday of each month. It'll be thematic, sometimes at the exhibitions, sometimes at the time of the year, sometimes other events that might be happening. Each one of them is going to have performances, making activities, different types of tours, different types of special events. And we're also unveiling a partnership uh, with the Indie Film Fest. So Craig Mintz and us have been working on a Saturday morning matinee series. So each one of these mornings is going to have a film in here at 10 in the morning. And most of them are going to be focused on films that 
often the parent size kids. So 70s, 80s, early 90s is what we're focusing on. And we're going to have 1985 prices for those films. And the last thing is we're having a cold cereal bar will be the other element. <laughs> so we're going to kick off our first family day with the Okie Doki Brothers, who are a, they won the Grammy last year for Best Kids Album, and they're up for it again this year. They'll be doing a bluegrass concert here on the stage, but also doing clogging lessons, banjo lessons, and teaching the kids how to make spoon instruments on January 3rd. We're going to be doing the Year of the Sheep, Chinese New Year for February. We're doing a hip hop university for March. So this is going to include things like teaching how to break dance, mix beats, be an MC, and also do street art. It's final four in April here in Indianapolis. So that day we're doing basketball here. <laughs> so we're going to be using free basket out in the park. But we're also going to have all the guards in the museum wearing referee outfits that day and calling art falls. Um, they may not know that yet, but that's happening. Um, <laughs> And we're doing all these things, really hopefully getting some people that are here for the tournament to come up to the museum, but doing these basketball-themed things, including making pennants, and we're going to create a logo that's kind of our basketball logo for the IMA. May is all about the outdoors. We're going to be having things throughout the park. We're screening Pee Wee's Big Adventure, including encouraging people to ride their bikes here and doing a bike parade. It'll be all about cars in June. So I talked about the break-in workshop. We've been doing car design things with this. We're having a, a car show on campus, but doing everything about cars for June. July's the 4th of July. We're going to take that off. We're doing a field day out in, in 100 acres um, in August. So this will be doing basically our version of Art Olympics, um, both for adults and kids. You're encouraged to start putting your teams together. We're doing everything about a DIY day in September. This will be in partnership with DAS, the design uh, uh, affiliate group here. And this will be things like lost arts of sign painting, cursive handwriting, all these things that I think often for younger generations aren't even familiar with. We are doing something in October I can't talk about yet, but I will say that the State Museum and us are talking about doing a joint family day, and it's going to be super cool. <laughs> And I'm personally very excited about it. That should be come out soon, but I wanted to mention that we are talking together to do something jointly for that. And then, speaking of secrets, November is all about secrets. So we're going to show Secret and M, but we're doing secret tours and other kind of things around kind of a quest throughout the museum. And then finally, in December, we're doing everything about Made Local. So we're going to do something about things here that are made in Indianapolis with local artists. We're going to have kids be able to come in and make Christmas presents. Uh, for people for in their family, and do everything around kind of local, uh, locally made products. The next thing is thinking about connecting to the community. And this is really important to us, is like how we get outside the grounds of the IMA. We think about our neighbors, we start interacting more with the community around us, and we get not only people coming here, but we start venturing out into the community itself. So since I've been here, we've been doing a lot of different kind of meetings with people. I've met with several of the people here that are in the room. We've been meeting with a lot of colleges and universities about possibilities there, meeting with other arts organizations, and meeting with neighborhood groups. We're actually doing a listening session here for some of the adjacent neighborhoods uh, next, next Thursday, so for a week from tonight here at the IMA. And I'm also doing one next Tuesday at Butler University for students. So we're trying to have more of those where we get out and hear what people are saying in the community and find ways we aren't assuming what people think, but really hearing what's happening and how the IMA can kind of fulfill some of those needs. One of the big parts of that, of kind of getting out there, is having the means to do it. I was hoping, if I got the logo sooner, that I was going to Photoshop this in, but I didn't. So <laughs> but we're going to have our own mobile Art X truck that's going to be able to go out in the community, basically take the program that we're doing all around the IMA campus, but also going out to fairs and festivals, going out to neighborhood groups, to schools, going out to First Fridays, being this active participant in the community and the ability to be able to go out and do things. Halloween. We just did a pumpkin carving event and showed the Blair Witch Project out in 100 Acres a couple weeks ago. Next year, our plan is to use the campus that we have and invite the neighborhood to come and trick or treat here. I'm hoping to convince many of my colleagues here to dress up and hand out candy at the different buildings around the campus. And that we can use this as a place in the neighborhood to come and safely trick or treat and kind of welcome people in for that night. MLK, which we've done in the past, we're doing that again. This year it's focusing on love and different ways of talking about love to strangers. And with that, we are actually uh, 
partnering with Decademics, we're partnering, partnering with uh, No No Stranger that are gonna be doing different portions of that, and that'll be happening for MLK this year. So it's something we've done annually, and we're gonna be continuing to do that as well. Other community days, so Spring Equinox. This year for Spring Equinox, we're gonna do it all about kites. So it'll be kite flying in 100 acres, but it's also kite music, and we're gonna also work on doing kite photography as well. For the summer, we're gonna bring in a band, we're gonna have a big summer party, and uh, do a giant picnic. So we're gonna to try to create the biggest picnic we've seen in Indianapolis for our summer solstice. Or, or, yeah, summer solstice. Autumn Equinox, this is a, again another uh, shot of the piece we did with Stuart Hyatt. So we're gonna focus again on Autumn Equinox being something where we're commissioning work by local artists and debuting something that day. We also are gonna do something with Autumn Equinox. It's gonna be the last day of the pop-up suburban we're doing at the Michelle Grabner Show. So it'll be all, really all about local artists for that event again. We're partnering with Ensemble Music Society again this March. So we'll be doing a performance here with uh, Trio Inoya. And then what they'll be doing that's interesting about this is they're doing more modern music, is that we'll be moving to the Fountain Room afterwards and having a very casual Q&A with the musicians where they're gonna talk about what they do, talk a little bit about the performance, and give a little bit of a 101 of modern music. So the hope is when we do more of these performances that we're wrapping that education piece into it as well. Other partnerships. So we have done in the past a partnership with the ICO for Winter Nights, so doing a live uh, score for a silent film. We're gonna do that again this February, so we'll be doing it with Peter Pan, and we're actually commissioning a new score for the 1924 Peter Pan for this. We're gonna be part of Butler's Arts Fest, which we haven't been in the past. Um, the theme this year is Outlaw and Outsiders. So for that, we're doing three events, three films with a musical component for each one. The first is The Good, Bad, The Ugly, and I'm actually working with Classically Music India and doing a piece for that, so we'll be doing a performance. Then we're going to do Bonnie and Clyde, and there's a musician, Brian Laidlaw, who's just, uh, just put out an album all about Bonnie and Clyde and a book of poetry, so we'll be performing and reading and then showing the film. And then lastly, and this will be another partnership with Classical Music Indie, we are going to show Pump Up the Volume uh, in the parking garage underneath, in the underground parking garage, and we're gonna do a week before that and that night on pirate radio, so we're actually gonna create a pirate radio station and broadcast from here for that event. What's been really cool is coming to town here <laughs> and meeting so many wonderful other creative people. And one uh, is when I met Craig Mintz from Indie Film Fest is that we both had this dream of doing something for the Back to the Future. So the actual date in the second film is next year. So it's October 21st, 2015 is the date in the film. It's the future date. I've been wanting to do that program for a decade. <laughs> And I wasn't gonna let that one slip by, and so did Craig. So we decided instead of fighting each other, we were gonna join forces and make a super awesome event. So this will be part of the Indie Film Fest Ro Roving Cinema series, where we'll be doing it here in partnership with the IMA, and we're gonna be transforming our surface parking lot into the mall parking lot, and hopefully getting a bunch of DeLoreans here for that event. <laughs> Cinema de Cellular is a new event. Been working with Mike Knight from Sky Blue Window on this. And this is a, something kind of riffing off a bit on the Cat Video Festival. So what we're going to do is a contest, almost like 48 hour film fest, where everything needs to be shot and edited on a cell phone. And so we'll be putting out a call soon for a nominations for this. So there'll be a category for things like Vine Video. There'll be a thing for like journalists. There'll be a thing for actually like, like long form, which is a cell phone we're gonna call three minutes. Uh, but doing this kind of cell phone video festival and be the first of its kind here. We're also partnering with Heron as part of the FATE conference that's happening, which is a national conference for art instructors in foundation, art and theory and education, I believe is the actual acronym. But there'll be about 500 college professors here in town the end of March. So we're gonna host one of the evenings here and bringing in an artist, this is Chris Kallemeyer, who's gonna be here that night doing a talk and a performance. Chris is based in San Francisco. He's a musician, curator, and artist. He really is interested in fluxus types of work and also really interested in kind of different forms of music. He just, uh, two weekends ago, was in Denver and was part of the Mark Mothersbaugh show and has actually did a version of Devo for the kickoff of the Mark uh, Mothersbaugh show in Denver. This particular piece here, he's actually working with the Minnesota Twins organist. 
and got her to come out uh, to this field and create a composition with people playing catch and then playing organ to that. This is another piece of Chris's. This is one that I want to restage here uh, as part of one of the times that he's coming to do work here. This is where you can check out a, it's like you check out the audio guide, you can check out a person. And they will play a live soundtrack for you as you walk around the gallery. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> another piece that Chris did is built an egg to do concerts for two people at a time. So these are the type of things that Chris does. Uh, what we're going to do really is focus a lot on these unique experiences that can only happen here. So winter nights. Winter nights has been a long series that we've done at the IMA. Um, but what, like we did with summer nights this past summer, we're going to activate it. So it's going to be programming before the events. It's not going to be just coming to see a film. Everyone is going to be themed and have special events that are happening prior. There's one thing I can't share with you tonight. We have a secret that we're holding until New Year's Eve. So if you come to New Year's Eve, you'll see it for the first time. But there's a space in the museum that we're transforming, and that's going to be home base for January and February's programming. It's going to be cool, and it'll be very opposite of the weather that time of year. Something that is embracing the weather that time of the year, one of the events we're doing is Fargo outside. So we'll be doing Fargo out in the amphitheater on January 23rd. I don't care what the weather is. I'm from Minnesota, so I just say it's like you can suck it up. So <laughs> but here's the deal. If you can prove, and you have to have documentation, prove that you lived at any point in time in your life in Minnesota or either Dakotas, you get heated seats. <laughs> if you can't, bring a blanket. So, and we're going to try to ship in some Minnesota food, some Minnesota beer. Um, and also do a Minnesota accent contest. And, and my wife like walked out of here, I think, with our son, but I think she's going to judge. So, <laughs> so we're going to kind of embrace place for this, and hopefully we'll do that for something each year. Some of the other events, so we're doing Wizard of Oz, and we're going to do the Pink Floyd mashup before that. We're doing art trivia. We're going to do, uh, we're doing PowerPoint karaoke for one of the nights. We're also going to have a bluegrass band pay for Old Brother Where Out Thou. And then for Holy Grail, we're going to do what we're calling grail crafts. So we're going to make things related to the film for that. Summer Nights, of course, will be back. And it's the 40th year of Summer Nights this year, which we're super excited about. Last summer was the first time we sold Summer Nights out. So we're going to be changing things up a little bit, too, and offering some things particularly for members. This year will be the first time, if you're a member, you can buy season tickets. So you can buy the whole run if you like. We're also going to have something for members called rush tickets. So on those really nice nights where we think we can get more people in, if you're a member, you can jump the line. And we'll be holding a few uh, seats for people for that. Also, because it's the 40th anniversary, we're going to do the same thing we did last year, is having a lot of interactive things where we mixed it up and had theme nights, like this is from Flashdance. We also did a lot of crowdsource things on the front of the stage. We had, live, we had DJed music, thematic things that I DJed most of the time and emceed. We'll be doing that again. Um, and a lot more surprises. But the other thing is that being it is the 40th anniversary, we're going to do a little March Madness ourselves. So in March, we're going to have a 64 film bracket that people vote on to pick the final four films that we show in August. So we're going to do those, we're going to do those regions as genres, and it'll be this online thing that happens through March, and those will be the final four films we show. But you're going to be the first audience to see the first film we're going to show for Summer Nights, which we're going to unveil tonight. And it is car themed, because uh, we're going to spin off of the car show. So we'll be showing Vacation for the first film. <laughs> and I've got some ideas for some contests. So <laughs> Other unique events that we've even already started, Avant Brunch, which takes the idea that you never listen to a record album all the way through anymore, or really sit down to enjoy a meal. So what if we combine those things? So the first one we did here uh, in uh, partnership with John Beeler and Michael Kaufman. And what this really is about is like, how do you have an experience that's really unique and exclusive, but also slow things down? So we listened to the My Brightest Diamond album three months before it was released off of the test pressing. And Aaron Till from Libertine made an exclusive off-menu brunch for us. And we're going to be doing this um, hopefully quarterly. The next one's going to be coming up in January. And we're partnering with uh, Palobin, which is, who is an electronic artist from New Jersey that has a new album coming out. And then Cerulean will be our chef for that and providing the food. And what's unique about this is we don't let you talk for the first hour. You have to listen and eat. 
And it becomes this really unique experience. I thought people were going to fight that, but they actually were really into it. So we have a couple of really surprising ones. And because of the nature of the music business, most of this we can't announce until they're really close to the, uh, uh, the actual date. So this is something to look out for. It's a good one to kind of follow us on social media when we make these announcements. There's one that's coming in March that I think we're going to sell out in about five minutes. So it's one to kind of look out for. B-Movie Bingo, if you're curious in this, you, have, you can come here in two weeks and try it out. We're inviting the Hollywood Theater in Wolf Choir from Portland, Oregon to come here, and then we're going to show one of the worst movies of all time. It's called The Stabilizer it's in the mid-'80s, and it is beyond, if you think a Sylvester Stallone movie is bad, this is about five steps below that. It rises to a level of brilliance because of how bad it is. But the best thing about bad movies is watching them together. They aren't nearly as fun when you watch them by yourself, but they're a lot of fun when you watch them with other people. So this takes that idea and turns it into a game. So you'll get a bingo card to play along with the stereotypes that happen in movies like this or your occurrences. Um, and then we also will be awarding prizes for that based on the film. So you'll get winning props from the film by playing B-Movie Bingo. And this will be happening on the 21st of November, and we're hoping to do more of these in 2015. Existing events that we're going to turn into bigger events. Project IMA is going to come back, and we're going to embrace this and turn it into an even bigger event. And perennial premiere, which always has been a big hit with our annual plant sale, but we're going to wrap this now with having more vendor displays, more food trucks, and then also having some workshops and demonstrations that are happening. And as you're waiting in line, any of you that have waited in line for this, live music while you wait in line. And just thinking about simple little things like adding amenities. So um, just this past summer, we bought 16 picnic tables, and we put them around campus. Some of you have maybe seen the ones that are outside of the tree here, right outside of Deer's Inc. And put hammocks out in the park. And it's been really wonderful seeing people engage with this, these simple things that encourage people to sit and want to hang out and meet here. And one of the great things about the hammocks is seeing a family here oh, a couple weeks ago, they said it was the longest time with their teenagers that they'd actually ever sat together as they were sitting at the hammocks over like over almost a year by creating the space that people want to kind of gather and meet and slow down. The last thing I'm going to talk about is supporting local artists. And this is something that's really important to me personally, and I think it's also something very important to the IMA. And, and we can support artists in a lot of different ways. So I'm really excited to announce a first tonight. We're going to have our first Art X Performing Artists in Residence for next year, which is going to be No No Stranger. And I know a good chunk of them are here tonight. Would you guys stand up? No, no, stranger. Could you stand up, please, for me? <laughs> so they just, uh, you can sit down if you want. <laughs> they, they just uh, debuted Optical Popsicle 7 here in the Toby uh, in October to a sold out house. We turned away 200 people at the door, and it was this crazy, amazing night. And they'll be doing Optical Popsicle here again next year, which we're proud to announce next October. But they're also going to be basically going to be here in residence doing things where they can use the Toby to help develop their work. But we're also going to have them do a family day, hopefully do some workshops. And, and the one other thing that I can have a little bit of a hint, they're going to be a big part of our New Year's Eve that's coming up here as well. So they're going to see a lot of No No Stranger at the IMA, and we are very, very happy to have them. We're also going to start a series of talks and events that are really aimed at um, really aimed at everybody, but really exclusive to artists and about professional practices. So this is Colleen Dillon Schneider. She actually writes uh, a blog called Know Your Bone. And what that really is, she's an arts marker. She's based in Chicago and London, and she really specializes in millennials, but also does consulting for artists on how they reach their audience. So she's one example where we're going to bring in over the course of the coming years under this program a lot more speakers and visiting artists to come in that I think will be really interesting to artists themselves and partnering, partnering more with colleges to get students here for those talks. Obviously, the general public should come too, but really having things that are geared towards the creatives in our community. Indie Island's coming back. So we took a little hiatus with myself and Tricia not being here, but we're going to focus again and make an open call for submissions here starting in December. And the focus is going to be have more local and regional artists do shorter residencies on the island. So look for that to come up soon. 
Monster Drawing Rally is going to debut. We're going to make this an annual event. This will be in December. We're going to invite uh, 70 local artists to come and draw with us. And they'll be making drawings live, so you can watch them draw. We'll be doing it right in the, the uh, Ephraimson entrance. And every drawing that they make will immediately go for sale for $35 flat fee. So the idea is you can come and see art being made, and then you also can purchase some art for your collection there. And all the funds raised for that are going to start a teen council program here at the IMA. We're going to start a weekly drawing club. We're inviting people to sit down. This is a program that I developed at the Walker. But what this is is we basically just around the picnic tables invite artists and the public to sit down and draw together. It's nothing to do with anything you make. It's all about kind of that social interaction, just sitting down and talking. This is another program with Classical Music Indie, and we're going to be launching an arts vending machine that we're going to have local artists work available in a vending machine. It's going to be a blind box. You'll get it. It'll probably be about $10, and you won't know if you've got an album or tickets to something or whatever it is, but it'll be kind of this like little bit of a local arts lottery that we're setting up. And then we're also going to be starting a community sort of art program. This is something that I helped develop back in Minnesota. Um, it's now in 72 cities around the country. But it takes the farm box model and spins it to art. So instead of getting leaks, you get art. Um, so you get a share from this that will basically be offering 50 shares. And those shares will be $300. And you'll get nine original works of art from artists that apply for the program. It's an idea of connecting artists with new collectors and having people that don't even have an idea how to start collecting art an entry point. And then this idea of transparency. I think it's really important for all this programming to have these vehicles for the public to interact to what's going on and to be able to talk with us. So starting the end of this month, I'm going to be creating at least once a month uh, an office hour where myself and members of my team will be available for you to come and talk with us, pitch us ideas, complain about things if you like. But we're going to kind of have this kind of transparency where you can come and actually talk to a curator here at the museum and create a very consistent vehicle for that to happen. And I'm hoping with this, too, when we have visiting artists that come in, that they can just come and join us. So the idea of just coming down, sitting down, and having lunch, and having a conversation. And finally, a little peek into 2016. That's just 2015. Um, so the idea for this is that we'll do this type of thing about every six months. We kind of give you an update where we're at and like give you a little bit of a tease for stuff that's going to happen in the future. But I'll give you just a little hint of a couple other things that are on the horizon. Ping pong festival. So we want to do a pong fest where it's three kinds of pong. So we want to do ping pong, Atari pong, and beer pong is this giant tournament. A bicycle film festival. This is something we'll likely do next year. So films about bikes, but also you drive your bike to it like a bike drive-in. I'm working on an exhibition that will be happening probably late 2016, early 2017. And the title of it is FOMO, or Fear of Missing Out. And with it is really concentrating on artists that are interested in working on how artists interact with an audience inside of a gallery context. This is one artist, his name's Andy Doucette. This is at the Crystal Bridges show that's up right now. And this is his mom booth. And for this, it's next to the information booth, but it's staffed by 40 moms from the Bentonville, Arkansas area. And they sit there and give you mom advice about things in the museum. <laughs> you can help them fold their laundry. You can get toilet paper there. Um, <laughs> But it is this mom info table. And a lot of it's about asking you, like, you know, share your favorite, favorite recipe, and there's a recipe exchange, or sharing different stories. Annie's going to be here in March as well. He's already done one site visit and is really interested in doing things both with the Lily House and doing some things with the Clues Collection here, thinking about different ways that we engage different parts of our museum. And finally, this is a projection festival that would happen throughout the city. It's more of a city collaborative effort where we would take over large projections on buildings, but also every screen I can get my hands on, from your cell phone to sports bars to stadium scoreboards, to create a one-night event of taking over all of these screens. So hoping to launch that um, in 2016 or 2017. And that's it. Um, So I really want to really thank you for coming out. This means a lot to us. Um, it, all of the, you know, everybody that's came out tonight, all the support that you've shown, all the people that I've met with here. 
uh, in support of the direction that we're going here at the museum. Um, I'm gonna be available as my team will be for questions after this and feel free to come up to us. I hope to see you at a lot of these upcoming events. And finally, thank you again to the Ephraimson Family Fund for this incredibly generous gift that's allowing us to do all of this. And uh, I guess enjoy yourself, have a good night. Thanks for coming.